All right, so let's talk about a couple of actors, man. Let's talk about Nicolas Cage and Adam Sandler, right? So he'll start off with um, Nick Cage himself. Um, so I'm finally going to talk about the unbearable weight of massive talent, right? Um, I saw the trailer for this when it dropped, and I thought that it was just a brilliant idea. Um, the the idea being that um, Nicolas Cage is pretty much playing himself, right? I mean, this is not the first time we've seen this uh, in 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 film, right? You know, it's some it's it's a technique, or I should say, a trope that we've seen before, right? But what what really made this stand out to me is that it's Nicolas Cage, right? A person who has been acting pretty much since the late eighties, and every decade finds some sort of way to be relevant, right? Yeah. Uh, whether it's through a movie that you laugh at for being bad. You cringe at for being bad, or you just you know enjoy for being bad, or you know ever so often he will drop some kind of performance from out of the blue, like say Bar Lieutenant or you know Mandy, right? That yeah. will just blow, yeah. that will just knock you out the water now, and then it's like, oh shit, like why why are we laughing at this guy for? You know what I mean? But yeah, you know what I mean. When when it comes to his um trajectory, right? When it comes to his uh, filmography, it's really one of the most unique, you know, because. You know, we could laugh and say, yeah, he's he's a shitty actor. And, you know, after oh. he won for leaving Las Vegas, yeah, his career went downhill. It's like, no, no, no. He just uh, picks pig. these roles, but it's just yeah, exactly. the roles he picks. That's the no. thing, you know? Well, I say pig. Oh, yes. How can I forget pig? One, yeah, two, right. oh, both of our um, favorite movie, um, well, one of our favorite films, basically, of um, of 2021. How can we forget that, man? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like I say, you know what I mean? For every... Um, Wicker Man, you know what I mean? They will be Pig, you know what I mean? Um, they will yeah. be Mandy and stuff like that, right? But it's just so interesting how his career is, you know what I mean? And you have to really respect the man for this scene. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to be in the film or they just pay me to be in the film, so that's why I'm there, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm always gonna gonna give 110% into it, you know what I mean? I might, I, might, I might come off wild and crazy ever so often, I might phone it in at times, but that's who I am, and that's pretty much why you 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 watch a film with my name on it, even though you probably will hate it, right? And that's what it is, you know. So yeah. um, that 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 pretty much is what this show here kind of explores, right? Because yeah, it, it 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 basically involves Nicolas Cage kind of going through sort of a a, a, a sort of a existential crisis of of sorts, right? Because um, basically we 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 learn that um, he is well trying to get this rule, right? But at the same time, now he just kind of feels like his his years, his decades of talent, will just be you know forgotten in the years to come, right? So you know, yeah, he just kind of feels like yeah, this this one rule could be it. This one rule could kind of revitalize my career, right? At the same time, he's trying to you know to to stay friendly, I should say, with his ex wife, um, who is played by Sharon Hogan, um, and his uh, well, you know, and their daughter as well, too, right? So what happens? Is that um, well, his his agent now ends up putting him on to this guy, the Spanish guy named um, Harvey, right? Who is played by the Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal. I was actually right. surprised to see him in the trailer, right? So it's like, yeah, hey, you know what I mean? Come, come. Um, pretty much, he kind of pays him to 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 come to his birthday party, right? So he's like, yeah, cool. I mean, again, what a millionaire. Cool, I'll, I'll come true. And well, he he didn't really know this till after the fact, but he actually has a script for him for um to read, right? So he just like, yeah, cool, I'll do it, right? But uh, after like uh, at the, the moment his his plane lands in um in Spain, um these two CIA agents, uh, one played by Miguel Tiffany Haddish, the other one played by um Ike uh, Baron Holtz. I didn't even know he was in this show. To be okay. honest, I was like, what you in this? Right, pretty much getting roped in into this um into this case. Okay, what happened? Well, they pretty much tell him that Harvey is this um is this drug dealer. Well, sorry, not not a drug dealer. Sorry, this this arms dealer, right? And they just pretty much trying to do this thing to kind of bring him down, right? So they figure, all right, well, you know, um, Javi's a you know a fanboy of Nick Cage, right? So yeah, just 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 get just just go to him, go to the mansion, talk to him, be friends with him and whatnot, and you know you'll get enough incriminating evidence to take him down, right? right. And then one thing leads to another, and you know, we actually get get sort of like a some 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 really interesting buddy moments between um between Harvey and Nicholas uh, and Nick himself. And you know some 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 action takes place as well too because yeah we talk about about arms deal and all that kind of stuff so yeah there, there's some action here there as well too and I'll stop right so this was what this was a film that I initially wanted to see in theaters right 
Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get around to, to seeing it. it. It, you know, just didn't get the time, right? So I watched it home, and I will say that I enjoyed it in my house. And admittedly, I probably would not have enjoyed it as much in theaters, right? Um, right. That's not to say the movie is terrible, right? It's really good. It's actually great. But it just didn't really blow me away the way I wanted to. Like, like it wasn't like... Like, I wasn't, like, laughing, you know, like, my sides wasn't hurting while I was watching it, right? And it's really because of the of the genre or genres that this film covers, right? So, it's not just, like, this laugh-out-loud comedy. It's actually, you have you have some action. Um, what it actually feels like, um, in a way, it feels a bit Coen Brothers-esque, in a sense. It feels very neo-noirish, the way how the, the, the film is um is put together, right? Um, and, right. and, by the way... Um, the, the script for this in particular is is strong in my opinion. Very, 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 very well written, I must say, man. Um, I love how meta it is, how intentionally on the nose it is when it comes to, to references. Yeah, they will they will drop they will title drop a film that um that Nick was in. And at times I was like, wait, you wasn't this, you know, being like case in point. They they talk about guarding tests. I never saw Guarding Test, but when I heard okay. that name, I was like, oh shit, yes, he was in Guarding Test, right? Right, right? Yeah, um, of course they mentioned Face Off, they mentioned um there's a there's a great reference to Raising Arizona. And right. it's, it's funny that I brought up the Cohen brothers because yeah, they, they made that, right? Mm. So, you know, points for that, right? And yeah, you know what I mean? And there was there was a moment where they drop um what is the name of the show by right? Captain Cornelli's mandolin, I think that's what the name of it is. Yeah. Like, oh yes, he was in that too, you know what I mean? So Yes, I am not the biggest. I, like I haven't seen all of Nick Cage's movies, um, so yeah, when they drop a name, it's like, oh yeah, you was in that too. You know what I mean? But it's how, um, just how they will drop these references on you <laughs> totally work for me. Um, but what what I love about the show is that it's not just about Nicolas Cage because it just easy could have just been Nicolas Cage is a great person and this is what the movie is about. It really feels genuine, like it. It feels legit, like yeah, this is this is like a um, this is a, a actor in a midlife crisis. This is exactly how he would see the world. He he, he thinks that like right down to his family, they should appreciate everything about him. Um, there's a nice little subplot involving uh, him loving the cabinet of Doctor Caligari, right? Right. It's like yeah, he thinks like that is like his second or third favorite movie of all time, right? And he's trying to get his daughter to watch it, but she's like, no, I don't want to see that shit. You know what I mean? Or I think she she did watch it and she just didn't find anything memorable or well about it right as a nice little um way to kind of show you know just how how you know when we reach a certain age we just kind of feel like you know we're so important and you know why why aren't people taking me on so yes everything i do everything i like and desire and all that kind of things must matter so i must kind of shove it in everybody's truth it's like yes i love this so that means that i must be appreciated and respected you know it's something that i i can relate to personally right in my opinion right but yeah uh, i do I, I love his his back and forth with with pedro by the way nick and pedro have excellent screen chemistry boy my god yeah. right yeah. um and yeah, they get the, the 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 chance to be crazy, to be over the top, to be silly, but intentionally so as well, right? Um, and you do buy into the fact that this guy who has a lot of money is like, yeah, but I, but Nick Cage is my favorite actor, and you know, well, it's because, well, slight spoiler, you know, him and his father watch God and Tess, and they love that movie so much and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. So you can right. buy into the fact that this guy in particular who has so much could say, hey, I write that script, I want you to be in it, right? But it's the fact that, oh, you know, he's 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 part of this. Um, this the Spanish mob and all that kind of stuff, and that's where you get the action, right? Um, as far as the action stuff, it it works. Like it's not going for John Woo. Like it's not gonna you're not gonna get John Woo face off stuff like that, right? Even though there is like a great reference to face off case in point with the the the, the iconic um, golden pistols, right? You get that there, right? right. Um, but you know the the action works and how they frame it actually works as well too. So it's like yeah, I mean Cage does his way around action, so he does that, right? Um, and also how the the CIA gets him to to kind of do these investigations and stay in character. It's like yeah, you actors so you're supposed to this is your dna you're supposed to know how to do this shit properly right so it totally works here but you know at the same time it's like you like i'm not here to do this right um but yeah you know what i mean um this 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 was still a very very well written um film right but what i would say though just for me personally um i, I didn't come out of this like all right, while watching this i was like laughing 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 every single minute right yes there's a there's a lot of great jokes right and a majority of them land just a a few kind of myths right but it wasn't like a gut busting laugh every single minute, right? They, they let the story flow. Uh, it gets really tense and dark at times, right? That's why uh, that's why I bring up the whole neo noir 
sense of it. It, it really does right. feel like I'm watching like I don't know like um, something like see um, the Big Lebowski, right? Where it's not just laughter, but again this this nice little murder mystery kind of vibe going on, right? So that's how this this show feels like. Uh, um, where yes, it's about Nicolas Cage, but the whole show is not about worshiping him or laughing at him. It's just he is just you know the the character who just kind of roped him in, roped into the situation, and he has to get out of it, right? That being said, though, the supporting cast is really great as well, uh, from Tiffany to Ike um, to Sharon. Um, and even the, the actress who plays um, her, um, his daughter, right? Who's played, um, sorry, um, Lil, Lily Sheen. First time I've seen her on screen, she was great as well. Um, and there's a few cameos as well, too. It's like, okay, well, you and this, you and this, right? Yeah, so it works, right? But um, at the end of the day, what, what really makes this show work is that you don't, you don't even have to be a fan of Nicolas Cage to appreciate it. Right. And the show itself is smart enough to say, we're not, like, again, like I say, we're not worshipping with the man. We're not putting him on a pedestal and saying he's the greatest actor of all time. But we we, we humanizing him now. we kind of taking him out of the screen, in a sense, and putting him in another. But in a sense, you do you do relate to him, you do understand him, you do feel for him, actually. You do sympathize with him. I can understand why a guy like him, who's been working in, in Hollywood for, like, what, four decades now, yeah. could feel the way he is, could feel like, yes, I've, I've done all these films, and yet I still feel underappreciated. You know what I mean? There's a great moment where he literally tells someone, yeah, this is legit my job. It's a job, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, we will, you know, people like us, so just kind of wonder why will you be in some kind of crappy, you know, movie, and then afterwards you'll be you'll be working in something like, like say, Pig, you know what I mean? Like that. It's your job. Right. That, that's what he does. You're right. And the love of the show establishes that very well, you know what I mean? So yeah, any day, not the funniest, funniest, funniest movie out there, but it is certainly one of the most enjoyable films I've seen this year. Um, it is one that if you are a cinephile, you will absolutely enjoy and appreciate. If you're into, you know, see, like uh, again, you know, neo noir stuff, you know, Coen Brothers stuff, you'll you'll appreciate as well too. The the, the meta references to to Hollywood and you know just the way how we view and well, how 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 movies I should say resonate with us emotionally. It works here. Um, the writing is strong. Direction I forgot to mention. The direction is is excellent in my opinion. Um, Tom Gormican. First time I'm hearing about this guy. Yeah, yeah. Tom Gormican really came through with a, just a, 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 a I want to say exquisite looking film boy. Because my God, there's some great shots in this though. I, I would have personally loved to see this on a big screen, but at a, at a, at to stick with my with my 19 inch monitor, right? So it is what it is. Right. But yeah. Um. This this was this was really really good though. So not right. so you nice you won't see this in in my best of, but this is definitely going to be an honorable mention. But but sure. trust me, you will see this in in, in numerous best of for uh, the CMR because yeah, this this actually lives up to its premise, man. So written wise, I'm gonna give this a, a decent, a strong four to five, man. Um, you don't have to be a Nicolas Cage fan to to enjoy it and appreciate it, but. Trust me, it, it it totally works. It totally justifies its existence. And yeah, you'll have a blast watching this man. So yeah, by all means, check out the unbearable weight of massive talent. Thanks. And now we're gonna move on to 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 another actor who has a similar <laughs> trajectory. Well, I know Ricardo, you 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 probably have one or two things to say about um, especially his dramatic roles. Uh, that would be Adam Sandler, right? Right. So yeah, this is this is another well, this is basically a sports drama film called Hustle, right? So yeah, this is this is Adam doing, you know, another dramatic role, right? And while I was watching this, I was tell you know, I was telling myself, um, because just right off the bat, his 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 performance is being, you know, being praised right now, right? And rightfully so. But you know, uh is it, is the kind of thing that you you just kinda of watch, right? Because it's funny that it's it, it's it's out on Netflix, right? Because you know, um, I think the last few films that he dropped through Netflix and his Happy Madison um, studio is these are uh, these sorry um, comedies, right? Um, yeah. A majority of which I either avoided. I think there was one in particular that I watched and I just flat out hated. I think it was um, I think it was oh gosh, I forget what it was. Some ridiculous something. I think it was some kind of western something. I can't remember what it right. was, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it, it, the only thing I want to see with Adam Sandler right now is anything involving Safdie and him. I care about That's what I was about to bring up. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because uh, with with that film, um, Uncut Gems, that was when people reminded, like, you know, Adam Adam yeah. could do dramatic roles in her. Yeah, like exactly. he could do like you you remember Punch Drunk Love? Uh, Punch Drunk Love? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, look look on Cut Gems for you, right? Pull that. <laughs> but yeah, he was he was so great in that film, man. And you know, like to this day, I don't know about you, Ricardo. I I I still feel bad that the man even get an Oscar now. Like even he and all yeah. brought it up too. Like, bro, yeah. like. 
I could yeah, get some sad man try to get a little something, man. You know? Yeah. So that's that's why actually a means that you know he would go the dramatic route on Netflix, right? Okay, thinking it's Netflix, you know. I just want to rock back, chill after a hard year work and you know, just watch some dumb comedy and laugh, right? Okay, Adam Sala, all right, cool. I want to see this. This could be a comedy. And no, it's not, you know what I mean? Uh, but what is it about, right? Um, and you know, like I, I wish you Ricardo could have checked it out, right? Because it's within your, you know, you you your your basketball nerd, right? So you, I yeah. know you would have appreciated this uh, film for that alone, right? So um, Adam plays Danny um, Sugarman, right? He is the scout for the Philadelphia 76ers, right? Um, and <laughs> this this caught me right off the bat, right? So I knew that Queen Latifah was in this film, but yeah. I didn't know that she was playing the man wife, you know? Oh. Like, all right, oh, oh, okay, okay, uh, right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, I, 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 again, I just didn't, because you know, I mean, it's not the first time you've seen Adam pair with you know some some leading ladies and whatnot, right? Like a Drew Barrymore or whatever, right? But yeah, I, I would not have thought like you know him and Queen Latifah, husband and wife, N- didn't see right. that coming. Right? Right, right. Anyway, so the the owner now Rex Merrick now who is played by Robert Duvall didn't even know he he was in this. Right, movie, okay, right? he's in this. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a passed away, right? But um, his son Vince, who is played by Ben Foster. Yeah, the great Ben Foster, right? It's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, well, he just kind of con- wants him to con- kind of continue doing his scout, right? He going a- a- across the country looking for, you know, looking for fresh talent. But, you know, he does not really find the right person, right? So through some circumstances, though, well, actually, I should say um, he 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 runs into a, a-, a sports agent friend of his play- uh, by the name of Leon Rich, uh, Leon Rich, sorry, who is played by Kenny Smith. Okay. Yeah, there's there's a lot of basketballers who who make appearances and well people involved in nba i should say like throughout history right who are in this film right and um he well he ends up uh, putting them on to uh, you know this well basically this this person well sorry they were they were going, doing some scouting in spain right of all places right, right? again right. we're going back to spain right and he runs into this well actually through some street ball that takes place this this one night he just kind of just strolling through you see the street ball match going on and he sees this kid, right, by the name of Bo Cruz. I shouldn't say kid. He's like 22 years old, right? Okay. Um, the kind so of interesting you, that you'll get. It's interesting you'll get somebody that old no, in, in basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and you actually brought that up in the very beginning. Like, you know, right. um, you, had a, you have to have, well, p- pretty much have people. You have to have like a, a boot certificate or an ID to prove that you are that age. That that kind of thing, you know? No, but I was saying, uh, 22 is like late, no? like if you're scouting for people. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. You're right, right. That's true. Yeah, you're right. right. So yeah, so Ricardo, you you probably wouldn't know this person, right? But um, the guy who's played uh, Bo Cruz is Juan Alberto Hernan Gomez Guerra. Uh, no, he probably is not. from the Utah Jazz. He okay. is he is Spanish, right? Okay, yeah, no because problem. I was watching him and all that. Like yeah, like you you are, you are a, a basketballer. Like you're not some actor playing a basketballer. No, but you are a basketballer. I could tell, right? right yeah. But yeah, not not familiar with this guy at all. But I knew right off the bat that he is um he is uh, a real basketballer. But like I say, he is from the Utah Jazz, right? Yeah, and well, reluctantly he's like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll come down to the states and I'll train and all that kind of stuff. And basically, what it is is just this sort of um, well, I, I want to say you know Rocky Balboa, um, Adonis Creed kind of vibe going on. So yeah, Stanley's pretty much training him, and it's it's funny, right? Philly, right? Ha ha ha, right? So again, Philly having a moment, um, and also to you know we we go into the home of Rocky Balboa, right? So yes, right. you 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 get some some solid you know um, training montages. I'm a sucker for these things. I I, I really like to see it, regardless of sport. You know what I mean? So yeah, you you, you get that right. But uh, at the same time, there is this. Um, um, this this um, case involving some aggra- uh, sorry this aggravation case. Well, basically him assaulting a guy, basically right. Um, that that pretty much um, something that 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 he did in Spain, right? And he actually explains what happened, right? But that could pretty much affect his career if he if he actually decides to or if he's actually picked, you know, to to play, right? And um, right. that that's something that Vince noticed, right? So Vince is like, "Yeah, don't don't bring him in." Right? But um, but Stan is like, "No, no, no! I see the potential in this guy now." And basically, the whole thing is that he wants to prepare him for the NBA draft, right? But Vince is like, "No, no, 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 no! Like like not yet." But Stan is like, "Nah, I want to bring him in, right?" And they have a, a argument. Um, Stanley pretty much walks up walks away from him. And yeah, he just decides to train him on his own and just pretty much figure out what to do with this guy and try to get him into the NBA, right? And I'll stop right there, right? So yeah, um, right off the bat, though, 
<clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Um, just just to touch on Adam Sandler for a bit. I thought that he was he was great in this. Um, yeah. He didn't bloom yeah, away. It was a performance, but he was he was great. Uh, what I love about it too is that he, you know, like he is so endearing, right? He is sympathetic. You do relate to him. He's not he's not an asshole. He's not a snob and whatnot, right? He really is genuine about you know seeing you know noticing talent in this guy, right? And you learn a little bit about the guy uh, about Bo himself. You know, what I mean, he he doesn't come from he doesn't come from from you know he comes from humble beginnings and whatnot, right? But he you know his life has been far from 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 easy, right? Um, yeah. He has a, a daughter, you know, what I mean, and he just wants to do right by her. Some drama involving his baby mama and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and you know that that is like the driving force, right? His daughter, right? And the man seriously has talent, right? Like in these these training montages, boy, like you know, just the just the skill that this man has with 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 you know with basketball, it's amazing, right? Um, but that being said, though, I know for some people, you know, this, this is the way to think about a movie like this, right? Yes, it plays the beats. It plays the beats that you're expecting a movie like this, right? So yes, you have your training montage. Of course, the character has to wake up four o'clock in the morning and run up a run up run up a you know um <laughs> run up a, a a few streets and whatnot, right? In the hoodie, right? They do all that, right? The right. only thing missing is just getting stronger. You like you don't hear that, right? But um it works. It it still works, right? But I just know for some people they were they were kind of roll their eyes like, all right, we're doing this again, like another sports movie with this. Uh, you know what I mean? But I I'm a sucker for that. It, I'm a sucker for that, right? But yeah, but back to Adam Sandler, though. Um, I I thought that he was great in this, though. Um, and you know, like I was I was I was kind of like watching this thing. I was telling myself like, all right, there, there could be something like wrong with him, right? They, like he has like a a medical issue with him basically it was is okay. the result of an accident as all well, i'll say but i was like looking for some kind of huge flaw like you know he has some addiction or something like that i forgot the name of the movie that uh ben affleck was in last year where he was a oh, coach okay. a basketball coach i think yeah, like, no, he don't. was he, he had alcohol uh, um he, he was he was an alcoholic right I like think. i was looking for something like that to be this film but but thankfully that that trope is not in here right, right. it's just really about molding this this um this this guy to be, you know, this this next, you know, NBA superstar. That that's really what it is, right? Um, Sportacast is great as well too. Even though we don't see much of Queen Latifah, I thought that she was great in it. Um, they actually have a daughter. Um, I forgot the actress's name. They actually shows up, but yeah, she she was great as well. There's a nice, well, a nice little bit of character development where she's trying to get into film school, right? So it's just basically an excuse for her to have a camera and record, you know, little training sessions and whatnot. But it works, right? Uh, I'll say two people I didn't expect to see in this play. Uh, McGill, um, Heidi Gardner from SNL. Okay. She was in that. I was like, what? Okay, okay, okay. Like, I, I, this is like the first time I've seen her well, in, a, in a Heidi movie. Gardner, no, to be fair, even though I had Heidi Gardner, I have a jokey look. She, I think she has Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I love them cheeks, so. Yeah, <laughs> just, she have, she have, I think she has legit, like, acting chops, to be fair. Uh, so yes, that's yes, so yes, yes, she yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, another person I did not expect to see this is Jilly White. Okay. Yeah, he was in this. He, he's, he's, right. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, he's, he's, he's the, uh, yeah, he's he's one of the yeah, he's he's one of the scouts as well too, you know. Yeah, right. But yeah, the, he's he's not there in the film that much though. But when he's there, it works. It 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 totally right. works, right? But yeah, what what really sells this film though is just these cameos, boy. So I'm just gonna just run through a few. Like you have Anthony Edwards. Uh, he plays and the, the funny the funny that this his name in the film is Kermit. Cause he's just this one guy who just keep taunting Bo. He just keep talking shit every time they train and every time they do it. So he's always talking shit to him. And it's just to get him to just like you know just wild out. You know what I mean? Um, but you know it's, it's one of those things like you you, you know you. He, he, is either he doing it on purpose to get him to to play better, you know, is one of those things like I want to push it in order to play better, but I feel like he just doing it on purpose, <laughs> like like he just want to fuck with it, right? Um, and oh yes, I forgot to mention too. Well, near the end of the film, I'll talk about the end of the film actually without spoiling too much, right? They actually do like this title sequence where you see all the basketballers who appear in this film, right? So you see um Julius Irving, right? He actually shows okay, right. up a few times in the film. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, is actually, real, a, they get a real Dr. J? Dr. They J got like the that. real Dr. J. And there's, there's okay. a little subplot involving this TikTok video where <laughs> he was doing this free children. I was like, yeah, this 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 yeah. works. Because, yeah, they incorporate, you know, social media in terms of promoting talent. Like, that. that is, that, that without spoiling much, it becomes, uh, you know, a, a big, um, 
a big driving force in the film, right? Like just how much people see you and how people, you know, just going to respond to you just based off how they see your moves. And, you know, it's not like we're going to fly over to Philly to see you. So, hey, what's the next best thing? Ah, social media, right? So that would say, I love how, how contemporary and on point in terms of the times, you know, the show is, right? Yeah. Um, Seth Curry. Um, she, right, okay, you know, right, Shaq, uh, Shaq make yeah. appearance. Charles right, Barclay, I'm not well, Korean. Yeah. Well, well, I forgot. I forgot the show that both Charles and and Shaka are on. I know my brother watches it, but I forgot the name of the show on ESPN. This 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 um this talk the sports talk show, but it's the show. It, I know that for sure. It's the exact show. <laughs> but yeah, they make up parents and they all talk about yeah yeah Bo and they call him Boa, right? That that's that's the nickname he have. It's like right, yeah, right, this right. this this guy is a real deal, man. Like you know, what I mean, it, it totally works, right? Um, Alan Iverson, he make up parents. Oh, um, Doc hey, Rivers, make up parents. Yeah. The, what is, what is it? Okay, what's the AI nickname again, boy? The, the uh, dream? What's the name again? I, I think so. Well, well, in, in, in the show, he, uh, he called himself AI. And it was in yeah, a yeah. montage involving the whole TikTok thing, right? So, yeah, he went up on Instagram and said, yo, yo, <laughs> you need to keep your eye out to this kid, The AI, I think AI says so. Something like that he says, right? Yeah. So, yeah, these, these appearances were great, though. I know as, as a basketball fan, if you're a basketball fan, boy, you will really, like, appreciate the, the these um these moments, man. And I just love that in the closing sequence, the closing title sequence, you see everybody. And as that just all look my face and this is where I was in the film. No, we gotta show footage of them in the in the um in the yeah. you know the, in the moments now, you know what I mean? Yeah, so case in point with Shaq, the moment yeah, where he's down the um the, the um the, the ring the itself. Ring? Yeah well, you do that yeah. several times. Well, show, yeah, that. show that show <laughs> that yeah <laughs> well right you see the the, the there um, several times so I guess yeah. when you watch you could tell me what 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 uh what match that was it but whatever right you but do yeah, like, you I know, have many examples of him doing that to be fair I mean Right, right, right. Yeah, but just just seeing these these people in this movie was great, though. So I would I would give the film this much. Eh? This is like a love letter to the love of basketball, man. I mean, yeah, this show has a lot of heart when it comes. To, I can tell that um, everybody involved. You know, what I mean, um, even though I'm not familiar with the director, this is Jeremiah Z- um, Ziga. Um, yeah, they, it, it's clear that they're huge fans of basketball, man. And I was making the joke too while watching this is that uh, this is. Technically, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the third sports movie to star um, Adam Sandler. The first one was what uh, Happy Gilmore. Second one was was Longest Yard, which was about American football too. So it's like, well, look at that, right? So yeah, it, it, it kind of makes sense you know, logically that you know he will tackle um, basketball, man. You know what I mean? And he is quite believable as this um, as this coach slash um, scout, right? You could feel you know just just the emotion he has in terms of like yo. This guy could make it, and you know, is it, in a way, it is about you know revitalizing his career, right? Like he wants to be known, right. like you know, the guy who found the next big thing. You know what I mean? So it's like that, and it totally works, right? So yeah, um, rating wise, I'm gonna give this a, a strong three and a half out of five, man. Um, it, it, it's it's alright for what it is, right? Oh, well, I forgot to mention as far as um the 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 ending. Uh, what I do wish though is that um we 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 got to see Bo actually play. Okay, what they do in the end is that they actually show like a clip of the real basketballer himself, right? Juan True in a match, right? And and that was that was it. Right. But like you know the way how you expect right. to see so sports dramas, right. yeah, 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 you're, you're kind of hoping that all right. In the third act, I want to see him overcome. I want to see him in a match. I want to see him take everything that he learned and basically like just show off and win. And so, you so know, how, how, yeah, speaking of well, I mean, you, the one downside of usually is is bad bad acting for basketballers, right? Basketballers can't act at all. Right? Yeah. How, how was how were they in this? How were you average? Um, everybody, everybody do their thing. Like they, nobody was like really tried to 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 give some kind of Oscar worthy performance. If it, if if that makes sense. Um, right, okay. they, there's a couple of moments where they they had to get Juan Chu like real pissed off though, and yeah, it it it, it wasn't bordering on cringe though, but you know, thankfully the scene didn't run for too long. Yeah. But it just kind of almost felt like, girl, you know, be like I have to be angry, but you know, it's it's like. Yeah. You know, yeah, I just being angry for the sake of angry, but there's no nuance to it. You know what I mean? There's no, right, no you know, like that. If if, if it gets if it gets rough, right? But yeah, I mean, as far as acting goes, yeah, like it's not the worst thing ever, but it it it's it's normal. It's it's fine, right? 
I would say if you right. if you're expecting something totally different, some new fresh take on the, the 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 sports drama genre, you're not gonna get that. And I know for some people that might be a, a big disappointment. They might feel like, all right, been there, seen that. Okay, you know the next big thing. All right, and it's from another country or another ethnicity, and right, of right. course, blah blah blah. You, you know, it's that right. But still, the way how they make it work, and also points for the choice of using a sort of like a quasi documentary film style approach that I thought that really worked okay, nice um, one, not just yeah. for the for the for the montages but also for like certain scenes in between I thought that kind of added to the somewhat realism of the film right but you could feel the heart it, it, well that that's the one thing that, that really stands out in right. this film you really feel the genuine heart in this film you could tell that this came from 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 a passion for for the for the for the sport itself right and I, I would say that if yeah. you are a fan of basketball you appreciate it if you're, if you're not into stuff like that or if you're just looking for something different as far as sports dramas go as to just going elsewhere um this is another comedy no mind Adam Sandler's in it but lastly I'll say um I kind of want to see him do more. Yeah. Netflix based dramas like this man because I really think that he needs to to stretch his his dramatic range a little bit more especially with the fact that, right, that he yeah. I mean he's not getting any younger right so how much time is he going to be this this you know old or old get boring and old you know Jewish guy talking like this like he can't do that for the rest yeah. of his life you know what I mean so yeah I say go for the dramatic roles man don't wait for for Safdies for the Safdie brothers to 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 call him you know to yeah. sorry to call yeah, it to, to, to work for the film yeah yeah, you have your studio, so yeah, keep keep cranking them out, man. So yeah, here's hoping we get um another solid film um from 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 that studio. And I would say just this last last thing, and then I'll shut up. Um, this is like easily the best like Netflix film I've seen with Adam Sandler. This is coming from somebody who's pretty much avoided a majority yeah, I, of them. I, uh, like, I haven't seen did, Hubie did, Halloween. Did, I hear that was okay, but yeah, exactly. I pretty much avoided. I think it was like the first one, the same ridiculous one. I think that was the one with him and David Speed that we were seeing. How uh, I think we right. talked about it, where it felt like you know they just had nothing to do on a weekend. They just said, "Fuck it, let me just make a film." I think it was that or right. something like that. But yeah, I, I think yeah, no, just usually, like, keeps cracking these, these films. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of these like like this kind of short term kind of thing. I I just not a uh, not a fan of it. Netflix because clearly they just kind of drew a really cheap buck with this. Now, like if if it wasn't for this, it would have been shitty theaters and game like I thought thirty two percent on rock tickets. That nonsense. So, like this, I really are glad that this exists. Yeah, yeah, and and now that uh, as, as you brought up the whole theatrical stuff, yeah, I think this this works way better as a Netflix film. Um, you know, because if it was in theaters, people would be like, yeah, but been there, seen that. But you know, here in, in Netflix, it's 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 fairly small scale. The story itself is fairly small scale, but it entertains, and you know, you'll you'll enjoy yourself. You'll enjoy yourself watching that. So, yeah, um, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff, yeah, by all means, definitely check out Hustle Man.